Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video, we'll be taking a look at the new and improved Gelid Tranquillo Rev 5, and also how you potentially could improve it with a little bit of addressable RGB. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so in today's video, we'll be taking a look at the Tranquillo. Revision 5 from our friends over at Jellid. This has been sent to us free of charge for review purposes. Uh, they haven't asked us to say anything, just uh, try it, see what we think, and uh, report back to you guys, which is exactly what we're going to do. They also sent over one of these, which is their Zodiac 120mm ARGB fans, which actually is quite handy, because for some people, you may not prefer the stealthy looks of the Tranquilo Web 5 in its default configuration. So if you want to add a little bit of addressable RGB and potentially get a little bit more performance out of it, this is definitely a good option. Price-wise, at the moment, we're looking at somewhere about $35 for the Tranquilo Web 5. And for the fan, the Zodiac 120mm, we're looking at about $10. So actually pretty decent prices so far. We'll go through, do an unboxing on both of these, and then we'll go through, look at some facts and figures. I've done some testing today with my Ryzen 9 3900X. Got some pretty interesting results, which uh, I'm sure you'll appreciate. And then we we'll go through at the very end and work out whether or not this is actually going to be the right cooler for you. So let's start off, first of all, with the Gelid Tranquilo Rev 5. So this is the updated version. It's actually been through quite a few revisions. Uh, we did the revision 4, actually not that long ago, which you can check out in the video notes below or from the cards up there. Packaging wise, very simple, very similar to what they normally do. So we've got a picture there on the front, also a recommended award. On the side of the box, we've got some of the specifications and some of the features, such as the new and improved electrostatic plating on there, which gives it its black stealthy look. Also the four exposed heat pipes and all that kind of good stuff. On the back, it tells you about what is actually included, mounting clips and all that kind of stuff. This has actually been super simplified. It makes it so easy. Uh, there will actually be a follow-up video on this to show you how to install it on various platforms such as AM4 and also LGA1700, so stay subscribed for that. On the other side we've got the technical specifications which I'll give you a close-up of so you can have a good look through there. But overall, yep, yeah, it's a pretty decent setup. If you're looking at a comparable cooler on the market at the moment, think along the lines of uh, Freezer 34, that kind of thing, the eSports. eSports Duo possibly is slightly better, but obviously Depending where you're buying it, it could be a little bit more expensive and also is a little bit more bulky. Whereas the Gelid Tranquilo Rev 5 actually has that trick up its sleeve. It's managed to create a cooler which is effectively the same as that type of thing, but is extremely compact. So going through the packaging, see what we actually get. So obviously you get the cooler itself, which we'll take a closer look at shortly. With the mounting system, everything, like I said earlier, has been super, super simplified. And for those of you that are on the AM4 or AM5 platforms, or potentially even older, AM2, 2 Plus, 3, 3 Plus, etc., then you're going to have a very, very easy time of this. For AMD users, we've just got these two brackets, and actually it's really nice to see that all of the screws and the springs and tensioners and all that kind of stuff is all captive. So it stays in there, no losing these at all and they're easily attached to the bottom of the cooler, just with two screws, which are included, there's a little bag, they just screw onto the bottom. So four screws and pretty much you're ready to go. When you go over to the Intel side of things, so you do get a replacement backplate, as you pretty much expect from most Intel coolers. This supports pretty much all Intel coolers from 775 right through to LGA 1700 and technically LGA 1800 when that arrives. All you need to do is to just move these on the end, so they just slide in and out depending which particular model you've got. And it does say quite clearly on the back which one is which. So 775, 1700, 1366, etc., etc. And again, very similar to the AMD setup. So we've just got two brackets, again, using the same four screws just attached to the bottom of the cooler. Very straightforward. And again, everything is completely captive. If you do need to adjust the arms slightly, they just move across very, very easily indeed. And again, it's all fully captive, so you're not going to lose any parts, which is great. Also included is a instruction manual, which um, is absolutely fine. Although for me personally, uh, I did find some of the print is a little bit on the small side. So yeah, it's got it all on there, but yeah, it is a little bit small. They could do with some zoomed in sections on there. But again, there's so little here to actually physically install. You can't go too far wrong. Also included in the kit is some GC Pro thermal paste and also a spatula for spread methods. So yeah, that's great. Nice to see that included. So let's take a look at the cooler itself. So as you can see, very compact design. I'll put the measurements up on the screen for you now. Effectively, what you get with this is a very narrow cooler, 120mm 
fans are supported and you do have the ability to slide the clips up and down so if you do have any issues with ram clearance which i think for this is going to be basically impossible because it is so compact and even when i did my testing earlier as you're probably seeing for some b-roll even with four sticks of ram installed on the motherboard on an x570 platform there is absolutely tons of room and you could still get things in between the fan and also the ram should you need to so yeah you've got no issues with compatibility there one thing i would have liked to have seen going slightly off topic here is the ability to have some extra springs included so you could do a kind of push pull mount i think that would make a great deal of sense obviously clips don't really cost a great deal so it would have been nice to have seen those included but what we do get is a really nice stealthy looking cooler the only thing which breaks up the stealth really is that badge in the middle so we've got the jelly tranquilo rev 5 badge in the middle which uh yeah is absolutely fine obviously if you want to quick sharpie pen then you can get rid of that altogether to give it a completely stealth look the fan itself is a really decent fan Lots of static pressure and also has RPM values. They do rate it between 700 RPM and 1600 RPM. Although in my testing, I did find that it would go to zero RPM. So basically completely stationary right up to 1700 RPM. And even at that top speed, actually pretty quiet and effectively all the way up to around about sort of 1500 to 1600 RPM. It's basically completely silent. Even at the top speed, there is a little bit of noise, but actually it was uh, considerably quieter than the graphics card I had installed in the computer. So yeah, almost silent. Looking on the bottom, so we've got a really nice cold plate set up there and you've got four exposed heat pipes there. Each one of those six mil thick and is a universal size. So you can mount it either way around, makes no difference whatsoever. Pretty lightweight as well, actually, considering uh, the cooling capacity of it. So yeah, all well and good. And you do have on the bottom, a four pin PWM connection as you'd expect these days. So yeah, no problems there whatsoever. So let's just assume for a moment that you don't actually like the stealthy look and you wanna have a little bit of color. Then an option is the Gelid Zodiac. This is a 120 mil fan, addressable RGB. You've got PWM control as you'd expect. Basically it is pretty much the same fan as this, although you do get addressable RGB built in. So let's take a quick look at this one. Nice fan actually same sort of mounting so you do have the rubber pads on all four corners front and back and effectively it does look identical which again is a real shame that they don't include the extra mounts in there so you could possibly have the addressable rgb one on the front have the non-addressable one on the back because basically you're not really going to see a great deal of that anyway i think that would have been a really good solution being able to do it in push pull sadly they don't include the clips so i haven't been able to do that in my testing but I'm pretty sure that in push-pull, you probably see a drop of another two or three degrees at least. So yeah, that would have been a great option. The fan itself does have, like I said, four pin PWM connection on there. And also for the addressable RGB, you've got the standard three pin five volt addressable RGB and also a pass-through with a little cap on the end to protect the pins. So if you wanna use that and attach other addressable RGB items, you certainly can do. Overall, nice fan, yeah, solid. No flex to the actual frame itself, so yeah, all good, made very well. Similar sort of specifications, although I did find in my testing that the RPM on this one was actually slightly more, only around about 50 RPM, so I guess that's within the kind of margins of error that you get with these types of fans. But yeah, effectively, it is pretty much the same thing. But where it does get interesting is the fact that you would think that basically they are the same fans, so you should expect the same results. But do you? Let's take a look. So now we're going to go through the results, which uh, I compiled a little bit earlier on today. So let's take a look first of all at the settings with the stock configuration. So this is with the Rev5 fan tested both in the PWM option, which is our standard curve, which is 30% at 30 degrees, 60% at 60 degrees, and 100% at 70 degrees. And we'll test that against the 100% fan settings in Fan Expert 4. So all of this is tested with the Ryzen 9 3900X. Precision boost overclocking is set to auto, and in general, we're getting somewhere in the region of about 147 watts as registered in hardware monitor. I should say, I suppose the uh, cooler itself is rated for a TDP of up to 150 watts. So we're pretty much at the edge of what it can do. Looking at the PWM results, so we had a low of 34.1 and a high of 74.6. Running at full speed, we did get a little bit of a reduction on the lows at 31.9. And on the highs, we dropped down about one and a half degrees at 72.1. I should mention that this is actually in ambient temperature, about 26 degrees here. It's pretty warm here in the UK at the moment. So yeah, it is uh, quite a warm environment, which I think would reflect kind of most countries around the world at the moment. 
So overall, pretty decent results and uh, very much in keeping with some of the actual cheaper 240mm AIOs we've seen and a lot of the 120mm tower coolers. A lot of them do all tend to perform in a very kind of similar way, unless you start going for ones which are either a dual tower or have got loads of extra heat pipes, which generally they do start costing considerably more. So let's see what the difference is like with an addressable RGB fan. It adds light, it adds a bit of color, but does it make a difference on temps? So looking at the Zodiac 120mm on the Rev5 cooler, we've got the PWM setting, 33.5, and the high setting of 74.6 degrees Celsius. So we actually gained a little bit there, not a great deal, a little bit on the low side, on the high side, pretty much identical. And if we run the fans at full speed, we get a result of 32.5 degrees Celsius on the low and 72.6 on the high. So again, very similar, almost identical. There's not really a great deal in it, although there is a very slight performance increase, which isn't always shown by the temperature. So let's take a look and see how the Cinebench scores did. So we've got four Cinebench scores here. This is just a five minute loop. First of all, we've got the PWM Rev5 in its stock configuration, that coming with 18.18.0. Then with it set to full speed, we've got a, a, actually weirdly a slight decrease, although it's because it isn't within the margin of error, looking at 18.155. When we switch over to the addressable RGB fan, first of all, in PWM, we get 18.208, so a, a very slight increase there. And with the fans running at full speed, full tilt, we're looking at 18.248. So yeah, definitely an upward trend if you're going with the addressable RGB. So in my mind, you guys know me, I do like my addressable RGB. And if it gives us a few extra points in Cinebench, then all the better for it. So overall, I'm actually really pleased. Super, super easy installation to do. Again, we will be doing a separate video on that. Although realistically, it probably isn't needed. It is so, so simple. But I guess some people might want to be interested in seeing that. If you are, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the channel icon to be notified of future videos. So there you go. Overall, I think they've done a fantastic job here. I do like the stealthy look of the, uh, the black electro plated on there and the exposed heat pipes do seem to be doing a particularly good job. One of the more notable things of how well it does is actually the noise profile. Even at full tilt, the noise, yeah, so you can hear the fan, you can hear it moving air, but it doesn't have any annoying whines to it and it's totally possible that you'd use it running it 100% all the time and you wouldn't get overly annoyed by it. Realistically, most people are just going to go with PWM and enjoy the silence where they can. But yeah, overall, I think for the price, not too bad. If they could see a slight price reduction, bring it down to maybe $30, that would be ideal. Just to give it that upper edge, there's so much competition in the market at the moment and with price differences here, there and everywhere and certain reductions on, it's really difficult to work out what is the best value for money. Based on the recommended retail price, I think this is in a pretty good place. But what I think isn't important, what you think is, so let me know what you think about it in the comments section below. But for now, I've been Mike, this is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.